Hi yogis! It's been a while and I figured that you were just pining for me and in, in misery like when is Hannah going to make another video? <laughs> so I'm here to put you out of your misery and I've challenged myself by committing to trying to make this a really concise tutorial as I have the propensity to be a bit verbose. So. Today we're going to play with Scorpion, which is a Scorpion in handstand, which is a pose that I just never, ever, ever thought I would ever be able to experience, especially drawing the toes to the head. Now it's important to note that toes to head does not make a Scorpion or does not make a scorpion more worthwhile or more valuable than any other. It has to do just a lot with you know, body type, um, shape, genetics, proportion, um, you know, predispositions. But the day that I did feel my toes touch my head, not only was it a unique sensation and might come in handy if my you know hands are ever out of working order and I have a really bad itch on my head. <laughs> um, it was a feeling of surprise and possibility, excitement. And that's the way that our asana practice, even though they are poses and some of quite a gymnastic quality, have the potential to affect us more deeply than just muscles and skin and bones. They affect us in our heart and in our belief systems, in our mind, that what we just think, especially when it comes to doubts and negativity, uh, is worth another look, another exam, and uh, a fair bit more curiosity. So two main things that have helped me develop a scorpion practice uh, have come from some of my teachers. My friend, Molly, who taught me to spread my toes and use my hamstrings, not just the back. And Kino McGregor, an Ashtanga teacher and student who taught the overbalance. So that's what we'll be looking at. Before you play with these uh, or, or work with them, Please be really warm. I just finished my practice, which is this sweaty, rosy glow you're getting to experience now. Lucky you. And um, warm up with wheels. And actually, let's start with one wheel together because there's one uh, step I'd like to highlight. So, <clears throat> setting up for your Urdhva on your asana. Drawing the arm bones in to a secure feeling in the socket, which is what we'll need when we're balancing on the hands in handstand. And this applies to headstand, forearm stand as well, and integrating the arm bones in. And spread your fingers, pressing down into your palms and your fingertips. Root your feet, feel your toes spread here, and use your hamstrings to help you lift up off the floor. Now, once you're on your crown, walk your hands in and pull up. Now, hug your arms towards each other, just like you will in handstand, and use your legs to help open your chest, drawing your arm bones further back towards your wrists. Now, oftentimes in wheel, we use the therapeutic action of just letting the head hang to decompress the discs in the neck. For today, as you press your hands down and curl or coil, as yoga teacher Noah Maze says, your chest, begin to look toward your thumbs and extend your chin away from your chest without jamming your neck, but do feel the extension between your chin and your sternum. Breathing, then tuck the chin and lower back down. Take a breath. Now that curling of the head, the looking forward with the eyes and also extending with the chin will be a really crucial step in Scorpion. If we drop the head, which can be used to transition from Scorpion into wheel, you'll lose balance. 
So it's that drawing forward action. You can even just practice that standing around the knees. Extend your arms and you're going to drag the hands down and the chest forward to feel, in the, feel the connection between your triceps, your delt, and, or delt and lats. And at the same time, ribs in a little so that the extension of chest doesn't come from a blowing out and a sitting in the back. It comes from a strength and more of an extension as opposed to a folding. Next step is before just going from handstand into a curve, there's to be a little overbalance where you're poised and paused. So there's a, a, a momentary stopping, but a calmness and a breath in that moment and, and to continue that calmness throughout where you sense your new proprioception. You sense your new relationship to space, to yourself, to your breath. And then with the spreading of the toes and the firming of the back of the leg, not a squeezing of the glutes, but a lengthening of the tailbone, you can draw the energy of your head and your toes towards each other. Even if the phys physical head and toes don't touch. Now, I don't know how to edit these videos, so cross your fingers, cross your toes, cross everything here, and hope uh, I get the balance for you today. So setting up in your solid handstand, spreading fingers, squeeze your arms, root through your fingertips, pick your lead leg, center the hip as best you can, and pull the ribs in. As you find your balance, bring the big toes together and spread them. Now comes the look forward and the overbalance. Then bending at the knees, reaching your chest, spread your toes, use your hamstrings and draw energetically down. Be pleased wherever you pause. And then you can release your head and move over into your wheel. So that was a very short momentary hold in Scorpion. The hold comes from yeah, physical balance, but also I find, and I'm a big believer in this, that it also comes from a willingness, a softness, a faith, and not just a, a doing, a going, a harder, uh, I got to get this. And one of my favorite things to think about all the time and anytime is that we're actually spinning in space. So when you attempt anything, but especially standing on your hands and, and things don't go picture perfect or just like you'd like them to, also remember that you're attempting to balance on your hands while revolving on this magnificent planet in outer space. And that might sound a little out there, but it just adds a, even more of a magic, a mystery, an excitement, uh, an enticement to the practice. So keep your faith, keep your heart, keep your breath, and keep your practice as much as you keep the literal firm of the arms, or the spread of the fingers, or the opening of collarbones. Those things matter just as much. And on one last side note, I'd like to give out a shout out to my dear friend, Andrea, who made this shirt. She and her husband are raising money for uh, an adoption. And all proceeds from her shirt, which you can find on Etsy, uh, go towards their cause. So thanks for watching. I do hope truly that this is helpful in one way or another, which is why I enjoy making these tutorials for you. Please feel free to share any other questions or comments if this was helpful and let me know if you have any requests. Thanks yogis.